Welcome to Living Fuel TV. I'm Casey Krejci, special guest Leonard Smith. Hi, I can't Hello, to be Leonard. Here. Thanks for being here. Continuing our, our discussions with Leonard. Uh, Leonard is a, a health advisor to the University of Miami in the area of integrative medicine. He's been on TV, on uh, book covers, you've probably seen him around. But we just enjoy getting together because it's stimu such stimulating thought and the research that you're able to, to uh, stumble onto, or I don't know how you do it, but you've really come up with some great stuff. So we'll continue our conversation. Today, I wanted to deal with a very potentially controversial subject, which isn't really quite so controversial when you look at the facts. Stem cells. Now, most of us are against killing babies for the possibility of helping others. Okay, but that's really not even the issue, is it? No, it's not. And uh, th that was uh, sort of misguided through lack of the appropriate information for the last at least five or eight years. The so embryonic is, stem cells. Yeah, well, embryonic stem cells, they obviously can grow into other things. Uh, the fact is that it's not necessary. Adult stem cells work fine, and a lot of people aren't aware of it, but the stem cells that come from a umbilical cord blood of a baby are considered adult stem cells, even though it's still just a, a baby. But uh, yes, I've worked with clinics that, in, out, outside of the United States, of course, that have used umbilical cord blood, they've used the patient's own stem cells, and, and so really there's no reason for that. As a matter of fact, anybody that keeps up with the daily news, uh, there have been articles in the paper where they could actually take skin and put it in the right environment and revert it back all the way to, a stem cell, or to an embryonic stem cell. The uh, University of Miami, where I work, actually took uh, stem cells from uh, three-year-olds and uh, 70, 80-year-olds, you know, just from the peripheral blood stem cells. And by putting them in the right environment, could have them go back all the way just a step or two past being an embryonic stem cell if you needed to do that. It's fascinating. We're right? not even sure that that's necessary, and it might even be dangerous because a little bit of differentiation in that cell may actually be protective. Uh, so that's but but having the studies with the embryonic stem, cell, stem cells showed very danger a lot of danger. There have been some cases of using fetal and embryonic stem cells where people have gotten tumors. Tumors, yes. Now there have probably been a lot that haven't, so I don't want to get into. Uh, but the point is, it's totally yes, unnecessary. That's the point. Now it's you talked about There's the Japanese no people who discovered in a in a wound an abundance of stem cells. Oh yeah, that was a very interesting thing, and I, I was looking at sort of when did I. And, and I'm sure it probably started sooner, but the earliest I could find was some Japanese graduate student working in somebody's biology lab doing wound study where it was able to find stem cells in the wound that was healing. So he repeated it and repeated it and repeated it, got very excited about it, told, talked to the, the, the professor he was working with, and it was that kind of research that led us to believe that we know stem cells are in the bone marrow. But we didn't know they were so freely left there to go to anything that's got a problem. So what are the and implications that, for this? The implications are huge. If keeping your bone marrow in health and keeping the stem cells in health probably have much, as much to do with anti-aging as anything we could ever look at because aging is lack of stem cells being able to be released from your own body to solve the problem. And we have, I mean, this sounds like an old cliche, diet and exercise have a lot to do, Yes. guess what, with releasing stem cells. They've actually shown that people who are doing aerobic exercise on a regular basis can have anywhere from four to eight times more stem cells circulating in your peripheral blood. Like if I stop now and took a unit of blood out of you and you separate out the white cells, it's the white blood cells that become stem cells. Not all of them, just certain uh, I think the population are called monocytes or, or the main one, but the receptors that are on those white blood cells determine what type of stem cell they will become. So there are places, I think there was a clinic in Thailand that was actually just taking out people's blood, separating out the white cells, separating out the stem cells. Now there weren't very many, so what you could do is you could culture actually them. culture them out of the body and grow them and give them back. Uh, we, we know we can do that here too. There's something called a granulocyte colony stimulating factor. It's actually a pharmaceutical drug. If you give that to somebody, they will tremendously increase the number of stem cells in their blood. So I think all this is right around the corner for the United States, but in the meantime, if you exercise, and even like your living fuel products, things like, we, we know things like green tea and the catechins in green tea. We know uh, blueberries. 
uh, raspberries, a lot of these kind of... Resveratrol. Yeah, well, all of the phytonutrients that are in a lot of our uh, fruits and vegetables may be also uh, helping to liberate stem cells. Guess what else? Some research we did in Costa Rica on this. If your vitamin D level has to be around at least 40, for you to, you, you'll find more stem cells cruising in your blood with a vitamin wow. D level at 40 than you would lower. Isn't it interesting that sunshine therapy used to be the therapy of choice for MD? It did, and it, it, and it was the treatment. You know, back even 100 years ago with t tuberculosis, people would go to sanitariums. One of the main things they did was let them rest and sit in the sun. Get vitamin D levels in. Exactly. That's the natural way to do it, actually. Fascinating. So implications for stem cells are regeneration of tired organs, like yes. cardiac failure or cardiac oh, yes. or We've disease. Seen people get stem cells. Uh, you can inject them directly in the coronary arteries, but that involves sticking a needle in the... Uh, femoral artery, it's like a cardiac cath, so it's a little more invasive, but we've actually found you can give them just intravenously, and if you give enough, they, we've had people with ejection fractions of like 15 to 18 percent, which means that the heart, when it's relaxed, is this big. When it contracts, it needs to contract down to at least 50 percent, 50 to 65 percent. Well, people that have got a heart failure for whatever the reason, if they're only contracting 15 to 20 percent, they're severely handicapped, and they're the ones that end up on transplant lists. Right. But you can give they're intravenous or intraarterial stem cells and have that reverse. So uh, up that's 40, one up example. Up to 40 plus but, percent. You know, but we've even seen people with spinal cord trauma that have re... You know, we've actually had a few patients with paraplegia that are now walking. Fantastic. It sounds miraculous. It is miraculous, it is miraculous. because it's using what God made Absolutely. and putting it back and just watching what happens. It's fantastic. And I find it kind of ironic that... Uh, uh, you know, after delivery of a baby, the afterbirth is kind of considered something messy you throw away, and yet you watch animals eat it, and not that I'm suggesting that we do, but gracious, Fascinating. Fascinating. I mean, there is life, total life is in the, not just the umbilical cord blood, but the cord and the matrix that's within the placenta. It's My, loaded with the growth factor. I have, I have a theory that the cord blood is so ripe, but once it goes into the baby, it's, 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 coded to do something. Right. So that's, I believe when they take it out of a baby, which they shouldn't, then, then the, the codes are already coded to do something else. But when you take it raw out of the, the umbilical cord before it even goes in right. and gets coded, I, I mean, this is just a theory. I, mean, I don't have science to back it up, but it's really powerful. There's a lot more going on between the placenta and the cord than just delivering blood, I'm sure of that. Yeah, fantastic. And all kind of growth factors. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome information, oh, awesome you. information. I hope Enjoy you enjoyed it. We wish you super health.